I never had to negotiate the early rounds of the FA Cup as a player and it's a completely new experience for his Birmingham team now into the third division for the first time in their history and conscious that Colchester the scene of such famous giant killing acts in the past could prove a real minefield even if they are currently struggling 91st in the football league the Colchester team is the usual mixture of old heads like Jim Hagen, Billy Gilbert, Trevor Morgan and Tommy English who've all been around and a few babies like the fullback Marcelo Bruce who's only 18 and playing his fourth game today he's the son of an American Forces airman and is incidentally eligible to play for the United States in the World Cup Birmingham have struggled to score of late and they've gambled on the return of number five Vince Overson back for his first game after being out two months injured although he did appear for the reserves in midweek Tony Ward of London, the referee, as Birmingham start this second round FA Cup tie in the yellow shirts, attacking the goal to the right. Seven was Bennett for Colchester, and that'll stay in. Frayne gets it back to his keeper, Martin Thomas. Capped once for the Welsh, and played once at Tottenham Hotspur, although he never really made the first team. Now 30 years of age. And the other manager, familiar face of Jock Wallace who won the treble twice during his days as manager at Glasgow Rangers and this will give Birmingham an opportunity for Overson to go forward and there's Overson marked by Tony English got the little flick on Bailey oh yes click on well Colchester are in disarray and they're appealing for a handball but Tony Ward's already sprinted back to the halfway line Nigel Cleghorn's fourth goal of the season and only four minutes gone well it wasn't the handball they were appealing for it was certainly an offside and Tony Ward looked perfectly placed and didn't give it Bailey, just one man in front of him. Now it's two. Ashley. Away by Gilbert to Bennett. Oh, that might drop nicely for Ashley. Oh, he's got a hand to it, the keeper. And it was Daniels who hooked it away. Well, I'm not sure whether John Grace did the right thing there or not. It worked out all right for Colchester in the end. He just got a fingertip to it has actually drilled it across the six-yard box. If he left it, it may well have gone behind. Gilbert. Tommy English. Oh, took it nicely on his chest. This is Collins. Tries to find Wilkins. And Wilkins won't get it. Tony English. Tommy English. Wilkins came off the defender. That'll be a corner. Well, halfway through the first half. And it would certainly be a big uplift for Colchester if they could level the score. Collins wants to take it quickly. English! Well, that's perhaps the first real goal-scoring attempt that Colchester have managed. Their captain, Tony English. Ashley, the full-back. Overson. Again, it's a chase for Dennis Bailey. dangerous when they run at the man these two a good ball in oh that looked like a push by Bruce and Gleghorn the player who ended up entangled in the net now one or two anxious looks towards the referee then hooked in by Bailey and well a bit more theatrical than dangerous wasn't it Gleghorn turn of speed and that'll be a corner and 
once again is John Frayne, who's gone a long way from left back to take this corner. Ian Overson is standing on the near post. Back by Frayne. Matthewson and all over the top. Dennis Bailey, rather fortunate that he broke for him there because it rebounded off a defender. And that would have been a perfect end to the first half for Birmingham. Bruce tried to hook it clear. It came back off Bailey. And the attempt was high. Matthewson. Lots of Birmingham throw. Then they've allowed him to turn. Sturridge, yes! Oh no, it was a little push. Well spotted, referee. That was a real professional's trick, that one. But he just gave the defender a little nudge, Jim Hagen, and then drops off him. The goal disallowed. Gilbert, Bruce, Gilbert again, oh, the touch wasn't strong enough, there's no offside here, Bailey, oh, he's got a chance for a shot on goal. Well, there was no evidence there of the scoring touch, which has brought him nine this season. He had a clear sight of John Grace in goal, and all because Gilbert and Bruce tried to play football between them in what was a silly position, really. Bennett. Bruce goes on the overlap. Collins. Bennett kept it in. There's nothing on for him. He's going to have to do it all on his own. That's a good ball from that position. Keeper's dropped it for the first time. Bell. And Birmingham survive. Well, Martin Thomas has only mishandled once in the match, and that was it, and it nearly proved very costly. Wilkins leaves it for Hagen. Tommy English still playing out wide on the left. He can pump it back again. That's 12 minutes left. Header was by Collins, and uh, would have dropped in. And yet another change in corners. This time it's uh, Tommy English who's gone across to take it. Well, that's hit really deep. Too deep even for Gilbert. Overson. Looping header by Eamon Collins. Bound for the top corner. Thomas tipped it over. to Langley Ashley makes a break and well Tom English didn't track with him did he Ashley and this is eating up the last few seconds and Birmingham won't complain Bell will be a throw to Birmingham Birmingham, a famous club with uh, a first division set up at St Andrews, but currently third division status in 10th place in the third division. Early shot. Birmingham now within the last few seconds of a place in the third round draw. Birmingham's uh, travelling supporters in joyous voice on the far side. As Taylor gives his directions. But these are the last few throws of the dice for Colchester. Bailey. Oh, good. Pity he lost his balance. 
Ashley was blocked, but it's Bell who's broken. Now there are two to look for in the middle, Hopkins and Cleghorn. Hopkins missed it, Cleghorn didn't. <laughs> Nigel Cleghorn's second goal of the match. And that goal, Birmingham second, comes in injury time to guarantee their place in the third round draw. Hopkins couldn't quite reach, and Cleghorn did really well to pull it back from there.